Hi, I'm Z from the Freemius team. Don't forget to introduce me. Right, this is... Tony, Sock Puppet Tony. My Sock Puppet sidekick. Hey, what do you call a sidekick? His lines are GPT generated. I'm an AI Sock Puppet. And you are in the web creation industry looking for one more easy thing you can do to bring in more customers. Or you just wanna make a few extra hundred or thousands of bucks a month. In this step-by-step -step guide, we'll show you how to generate income with a product you can build, market, and sell with zero coding skills and without investing tons of money in the process. Let's plug in! It's a great template kits. You don't need to be a developer. Elementor is definitely an exciting space, and I think that it's a great tool for people who want to earn a living with WordPress. If they can spend a couple of bucks on a template kit that is very, very much specific to a very tiny niche, they're going to be able to execute the growth of their company so much faster because it's just important you're done. If you're a web developer or a designer or a website owner, or creator, you've probably heard of WordPress's most popular page builder, Elementor. And if you've heard of Elementor, you may know that you can use the platform to export any web page you create as a template, or several pages as a template kit. Technically speaking, templates are just like any Elementor website, only that they're packaged as a JSON file, which you can sell infinite times. And with over 13 million active installs, and Elementor powering over 8.5% of the internet, making it the most popular page builder today, we're only beginning to see the demand that these templates are expected to have in the near future. The fact that templates are easy to make and require no coding skills also means that outsourcing their creation to a professional is relatively cheap, and the potential profit margins make it a solid, worthwhile investment. The first step in making Elementor templates lucrative is deciding what kind of site and audience you're building for. Choosing what to build and who to sell to will impact how many people are interested in the template and how much they're willing to pay for it. The biggest challenge or the biggest risk would just be the amount of competition. This is Matt Medeiros. A WordPress hero. Matt stresses that if you want to get your foot into this business, you need to consider that lots of other people are doing this. You shouldn't let the, the, the fact that there's a lot of competition hold you back, but just know that you will need to find a way to stand out. Okay guys, sounds like time to pack up your templates and hit the road, because ain't no chance you gonna be able to stand out. Come on, don't listen to him. Standing out doesn't mean you'll need to reinvent the wheel. In fact, when it comes to making an entrance to any market, it always more or less boils down to the same thing. Choose specific niches. This is Amit Karen designer, marketing expert, and founder of Unlimited Elements, a super popular plugin that adds functionality and flexibility to the Elementor page builder. On our call, Amit suggested a way of avoiding competition with the more generic mass market templates by researching specific SEO keywords. When people search on Google, it's really important how you phrase that in your product description. The more specific, I think the easier it will be for you to market this and to reach out in SEO terms. For example, a wedding template kit. So a lot of people are looking to create like a mini site for the wedding with a gallery, with an invitation, reception information, celebration information, and all that. So they'll search in Google for a wedding template kit for Elementor. Tony and I will show you how it's done. Ready, Tony? Yeah, let's go. Uh, uh, yeah. SEO apps like SEMrush let you test the potential of specific keywords in Google. E-commerce is a lucrative sector. So let's say we look up e-commerce website templates and what we see is that an average of 12.1k people worldwide search for e-commerce website templates every month. But keyword difficulty is 63%, which means tons of people would compete with you for attention over this phrase. Now let's type in SaaS website templates. And as you can see here, we get an average of 4K people Googling this every month, which is lower. But the keyword difficulty is down to 23%, meaning very little competition. So you could potentially reach more customers by finding a few different keywords with low competition like this one and build a different template for each keyword. But before you pause the video and go and build your SaaS website template, consider that there are many viable SEO opportunities out there. So the audience you focus on should not be determined by SEO alone. Templates and the way that we help people design sites in Elementor is actually a pretty big marketing draw for us. As director of podcasting success at Castos, Matt used to cater to an audience of users starting their first podcast. Castos aren't selling the Elementor template itself to their users. They offer it for free as a way of attracting more customers to their podcasting products. A great strategy if you already sell products like WordPress plugins or themes. What we're doing is 
just trying to fast track our customers to getting something done. Folks are already so burned out <laughs> getting their podcast off the ground. They don't want to mess around with, with trying to figure out how do I query my WordPress website and show all of my podcast custom post types. Even if they were using Elementor, it's still like if you had a blank canvas using Elementor, it's like, where do I begin? We do that for them in the template kit, and then they just enable it right with our plugins. And Castos isn't the only company that follows this practice. You've got to go out and identify why someone even wants that page, that kit that you can sell to get them to a point where they're either saving time or saving money. And when you identify what complements that, then to me, that's where you start going for that niche, that single item that creates the demand for your template kit. Jacob is the co-owner of Starfish Reviews, a WordPress plugin that helps capture customer reviews and sort them into collections. They offer templates as a bonus to people buying their plugin. If we were to just go out and sell a template kit, yeah, we'd get a couple sales on it. To me, we found the best success by adding it in complementary to and creating more demand for the template. But say you're a web creator starting a side hustle or an agency looking to start building ones and selling multiple times. If you don't have an audience you already cater to, consider aiming straight for the best paying customers. For me, I would want to build something that serves just the higher end market, which means that it'll be the inverse of work is like, instead of working broadly across many sectors, you're going to have to work twice as hard, 10 times as hard into one vertical, whether that's like medical, higher ed, um, publications. Other lucrative verticals include e-commerce, architecture, and technology. On Envato's Theme Forest, for instance, architecture template kits sell for around 20% more than average, and technology-related templates sell for about 25% above average on Template Monster. But note that choosing a vertical of high-paying customers may also put you up against more fierce competition. A really important thing about the template kits is that they are kits. And the bigger the kit, the more likely someone is, will be interested in the kit. Now that we've covered how to select your target audience, let's discuss building your template to make it more sellable. I'll break it up into six easy steps. First, consider the templates built with the free version of Elementor can be used by free users, while templates built with the pro version will mean your buyers will need to pay for the pro version of Elementor too. This gives the free version an advantage, unless the template you're building requires pro features like pro widgets, custom CSS, custom JavaScript, and using Theme Builder or WooCommerce Builder. So choosing free or pro is a matter of who you're building for and what they need. Second. Build a versatile kit packed with designs that your customers can tweak and adjust to their needs. It's better to show off all sorts of header types, all sorts of footer types, all sorts of contact pages, and everything should be in the same design. Even if it's uh, blog pages, post pages, uh, header templates with social media links, with a search bar, so people can choose and like put the puzzle together. Third, when it comes to the style of design, research your niche. Look at existing sites in your niche to get inspiration and find out how to make your template compelling to your audience. I'd also check marketplaces like Envato and browse templates created by your competitors. And don't skip reading their bad review section. This will give you a good idea of the designs, plugins, and features typically included in the kits for your audience and help you offer features that are missing in the current offering. Step number four. Do it like a pro. Make sure template branding is consistent across pages. Use one basic layout across pages, keeping sections, widths, colors, fonts, headers, footers, menus, borders, all consistent. If you design the template yourself, I recommend always using a professional software like Adobe XD and never designing directly inside Elementor. The reasons are well explained in this video by my pal Reno. If you think you're faster by starting at Elementor, uh, you're actually not. And if you use images to create a template, Aim to purchase royalty-free images and include them in the final export of the kit. Many times when you buy a template kit and you import it, it looks really good on the website. Uh, but when you import it to your website after you purchased it, you find out that all of the nice images that it had are gone. And it's just a bunch of placeholders. Next is five and I feel alive. Even if you do outsource the template to a freelancer, maintain control over quality and style. Consider that freelancers won't do market research for you, so you'll need to provide all the specs and details you can to make sure that the template is suitable for your audience. I recommend providing a wireframe of the site and a few styling references. You can build a wireframe using professional apps like Figma or InVision, but you can also use Google Docs for free by creating a table, merging cells, adding titles, and defining sections. 
When you place the order, make sure to specify that you want to review the freelancer's work exported from a professional design tool like Adobe XD and finalize the design in that format before they make the page live inside Elementor. You might want to commit the Elementor design on your own if you have web development experience. And finally, six, make sure your template is responsive to mobile. Most of the people, when they're browsing, even though when they're buying your template kit, they're buying it probably from desktop. So really important to show how it looks on mobile. And this is something that a lot of people miss out on, especially designers. This is less important for them because they're working on Photoshop and Photoshop is desktop and they're looking all the time how it's looking on their computer, but they're forgetting that most people don't see it that way. Building the template is pretty straightforward. I'll link this video in the description below. And now that your template is ready, it's time to make some sales. So how many template downloads would you need to make a week to make 500 bucks a month? The most profitable way to make a sale is through your own channels, cutting the cost of three-party services like marketplaces down as much as possible. But to sell on your own, you'll need to have some traffic on your site or an existing audience of followers on social media. If you don't have a following, you can build one. And I'll get to that in a moment. However, the easiest way to quickly start seeing some cash is to upload your template to a marketplace and hope your preparations help grab people's attention. Check out this comparison of the top marketplaces pros and cons. As you can see in this sheet, ThemeForest is by far the most profitable marketplace with templates selling at a typical price of $24 per kit. But even if you go with ThemeForest, you'll need to sell 42 templates monthly to make 500 bucks a month due to their $5 per template buyer's fee and their 37.5% commission rate. This gives an obvious advantage to selling independently outside the marketplace. And it is possible to sell on your own channels and on ThemeForest simultaneously, but non-exclusive sellers pay ThemeForest a commission of 55%. Ouch. However, if you do sell exclusively on ThemeForest, the more you sell, the lower the commissions will drop, potentially as low as 12.5%. Fancy! And if you optimize for a higher paying niche, you could make as much as 500 a month selling one template a day. Not bad, not bad! Other downsides of Envato include their quality review, meaning you could potentially be hard rejected, after which you won't be able to submit your template ever again. And though alternative marketplaces have less strict review processes, your income would be even lower when going with Creative Market or Template Monster. Huh? Monster? Male or female? Given that marketplace rates can be a disaster, let's see how much you'd make selling directly to the customer, and how you can bump that up to around 1k or even 2.5k a month. But before I move on, you may find it useful to know that Freemius is a great solution for selling Elementor templates, plugins, themes, and SaaS from your own site. Freemius also handles tons of exhausting administrative work for you, including sales tax and VAT collection, reporting, and remittance. Freemius processes chargebacks and ensures PCI and other regulatory compliances so that you can focus on creating, marketing, and getting paid for your products. Let's see how much you'd make selling directly to the customer and how you can bump that up to around 1K or even 2.5K a month. One example could be giving away free template kits for people and they need to leave their email. If you want to create kind of an audience around the topic, if you're going to try to sell this, for example, to website builders, you're going to try to make communities around website building and then you will have an audience that you can use as leverage to market your products. And once you've done that and you have a good follower base and a loyal follower base, then you can start slowly but surely to try to push one product at a time. The idea of building an audience of email subscribers is useful in two major cases. The first is if you're building an audience for digital products other than the templates themselves, like Matt did for Castos and Jacob does for Starfish Reviews. And the second would be if your target audience is of a kind that would later be interested in buying additional templates. Applicable audiences I can think of include architects who need different websites for different projects, agencies who do marketing services for their clients and are constantly looking for fresh designs, and big businesses who are putting up sales every season and need a new flashy landing page every few months. This creates the potential of selling all access memberships to your entire template kit library. 
In marketplaces, memberships of this kind are offered for $100 and up, meaning that if you sell 10 memberships a month, you can drive your income up by at least 1K a month. If you add that to your one-off sales and considering that you'd be cutting costs down by selling through your own website, you could be looking at 1.5K a month. And if you go full-blown on selling templates, you could make even more. In our dedicated blog post, our friend Muhammad Musa shares how he did it. I put a link to our blog in the description below. Before we sign off, let's go through a checklist of best practices and mistakes you should avoid in order to make the most of and spend the least on your templates. Typically, the fourth or fifth time that I pull out that template, I realize I had a step in there that was kind of unnecessary. Or maybe I was missing a step. Creating an excellent kit is a matter of trial and error. So tip number one is treat it that way. We can refine it over time to have it be as simple as possible while maintaining the advanced capability that the simplicity brings because we're refining it over and over and over again. Number two is don't assume your template is great just because you think it is. Ask people for feedback and listen to it. Not always your environment will be the same as other people's environment. One person might install it on localhost, one person might install it on a specific server with specific demands or needs, one other person might install it with other plugins that are installed that might be interfering with some of the styles. This also covers for tip number three. Templates are as flexible as any digital product is. So, release template updates addressing feedback. Four, prepare support materials and tutorials to make it easy for users to import and offer customer support for whoever has trouble. Five is to list everything your template includes. People are going to start looking into the specific things and those are things that you need to write. If you don't write, it doesn't exist. If there's color themes, you need to mention it. If it's responsive and you think that people know that everything is responsive, no, that's not enough. Because this is also an SEO thing. Everything that you have, you, you're going to want to write it. And six, marketing, marketing, marketing. Do anything you can to spread the word. Anything? Anything legal that prioritizes human well-being. Build your community on social media. Reach out to influencers in your niche and ask to do a guest post on their blog. Reward customers who refer their friends with special benefits and discounts. Post useful content on your channels or host a live stream with step-by-step -step building tips and offer followers an exclusive discount. Also, don't skip crediting your brand by adding a link to your site inside the templates to create brand awareness. Well, that's it for this episode. I'm tired. What? 90% uh, of the lines were mine. I think I twisted a tooth on one of those templates. Anyway, if you found this video useful, consider subscribing for more business growth hacks, tips, and step-by-step -step videos. And ChatGPT generated punchlines. Looks to me like you need some ChatGPT-generated fingers. Anyway, see you next time!